Recite a salawat, please. The first point that comes to mind, and I think it's important that we understand this and not have any type of misunderstanding in this regard, is about the martyrdom of uh, Malcolm X. He's a shaheed. What is the definition of a shaheed? Who is a shaheed? Someone that utila fi sabilillah. Someone who's been killed in the way of Allah. While that definition can apply to anyone that is doing any type of divine activity and then in the process they pass, meaning we have a hadith telling us that if a person is even... Uh, as simple as providing means for their family and they die while they're involved in that they are considered a shaheed or if a mother or if a woman in the process of giving birth that jihad this is considered jihad in the path of Allah if she loses her life, that is considered shahada and martyrdom. We have a hadith. Both of those are mentioned in hadith and they are accurate as they are all from the Ahlul Bayt. Anything that comes from them is accurate, is true. We need to understand that. However, uh, the clearest and the highest form of shahada is the one that a person is fighting the enemies of Allah, those who are doing what the Quran calls Saddun an Sabilillah, preventing people from moving in the direction of Allah. They are pushing people in the direction of Allah against what the enemies of Allah want. And the enemies of Allah get angry of that. One way or the other, they take the life of this person. This is a shaheed. Malcolm X is a shaheed of this form. Okay. There are some that don't want him to be seen as such. In a couple of different ways. One is, although the establishment here, which includes the media, which includes the movie industry, which includes the documentary documentary making industry and all of that, although this whole establishment does not want, and the political obviously establishment, that whole system, does not want Malcolm X to be mentioned, when there is mention of him by this establishment, They don't want him to be mentioned frequently, but the idea is there's no choice. Anyone that has moved in the path of Allah and has made the enemies of Allah angry to the extent that the enemies of Allah have taken his life, those enemies have not wanted that person's name to be mentioned. That's why they didn't want Imam al Hussein's name to be mentioned, his sacrifice to be mentioned, his movement to be mentioned. His ziyarah to be something that people do. This is what enemies of Allah do. The enemies of Allah, this establishment, do not want this person's name to be mentioned. The problem is Allah wants it to be mentioned. And it will be mentioned. What are they going to do? They're going to try to distract the attentions one way or another. Deviate. This person becomes a beacon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides people to the path, to his path, what they want to try to do is to take out that beacon. They can't take out the name. They can't cause people not to talk about him. They want to distract from the main elements and the main points regarding that person. One of, this, one of them is this whole discussion or debate about who killed him. This is a distraction. Netflix released something about his... I didn't even want to watch the thing. I saw a post by a brother 
an Afro-American brother who is apparently based in a different country. I'm not quite sure. I haven't had personal contact. It's only through social media that I know him. He said, I didn't watch it because I already knew who killed him. Uh, that's a very accurate statement. It doesn't matter who pulled the trigger. This whole discussion was that this guy, was it that guy, this organization, that organization, all of these. The whole discussion is a distraction and whichever of them was it is not important. What is important is the establishment had that happen through whomever. Through whomever. It doesn't matter who did it. It's like we sit here and discuss who was it that did what to the lady Fatima to Zahra. It doesn't matter which one of them did what exactly. What's important is that that establishment had that done one way or another. Don't get distracted. This is one area that there's distractions to try to put the blame on someone, something other than the ones who are actually responsible for it. This establishment is responsible for the death of Malcolm X. Okay. The great Satan has taken the life of this individual one way or another. It doesn't matter how they did it. That's besides the point. The other thing that is very important, and again, there's attempts to distract us from this, is about what exactly it was that Malcolm X did that is most important. What exactly is it? What is... The service of Malcolm X. Malcolm X had, in a sense, ups and downs. The initial stages of the life of this great man, we know, didn't seem to be too great. Most important. Recite a salawat, please. <laughs> That's a pretty uh, serious delay in the echo. <laughs> Recite another salawat, please. There were different stages in his life. The first part was nothing that uh, he looked up to. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him through that. He saw a lot of different things. Then he was pulled out of it. His tawbah that brought him and made him the character that he is. A lot of people go through that. But the important thing is where you end up. Another stage of his life is being with Elijah Muhammad and their movement, that particular organization. And obviously we know from, as Malcolm X realized later, as he grew and he got closer and closer to Allah and the right path, he realized later that this is not Islam. What was being taught was called Islam. And certain elements were there, but it was not the Islam that was taught, revealed upon the heart of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. So he got purer. Okay. There's these different stages. And in each of them, he did different things. He said different things. For instance, one of the last things that uh, is said and he said one of the last elements or items on the list that he spoke of uh, somewhat frequently in his last days was the leadership of that movement Elijah Muhammad and uh, who he was what he did what wrongs he did the corruption that he was involved in and so on and so forth and then that people want to kill him and this that the other there's a lot of conversation towards the end of that People asking why you moved away from that movement and so on and so forth. This 
although it's something that's important to understand and to look into and find out what the movement of Elijah Muhammad was, how Malcolm X, that is a pure individual, someone that Allah selected as a shaheed, how he views it from his perspective, who these people were, why he trusted them, when his trust was broken, what he saw, and so on and so forth. Although that is uh, important, it's not. But compared to the main element, the main part of the character of Malcolm X that made him the great person that he was, made him the person that Allah gifted him with martyrdom, with shahada, in the way that he was given that shahada, was this. He encouraged. He was courageous. He spoke directly against the great Satan. He was fearless in that. He did not hold back in any way. No one else spoke against the system and clarified what this system is like. As No one compares to Malcolm X. He guided the people, clarified this shaitan that is deceptive, that has hypocrisy, uses hypocrisy to try to make it seem like the system is all democratic. I don't know wanting to help the people, the system is this, and then getting movements, one of the items that Malcolm X has in clarifying to the people is all these figures and movements that are used by the system to suppress, to control, the oppressed African-American community in this country from wanting to have anything short of a revolution against the system. The figures, I don't want to mention those names for reasons. You can go and look at his speeches. He didn't hold back. He told the people, these are hypocrites. You think this is a, a black leader? You think that is a black leader? These guys all were gathered together. The Kennedy administration used them the million man march at the time the march on washington at the time that organically came out of the oppressions against the african americans this was hijacked with the use of these so-called leaders malcolm x exposed that and exposed them Expose the system, their hypocrisy, and these leaders. This is a great service. And this really angers the ones who tried to hide that. They didn't come out openly and say, these are our guys. They didn't want people to think that this is hijacked by the establishment. It was Malcolm X who exposes that. His battle against the system against the great Satan led to his martyrdom. This jihad fi sabilillah that he did against the enemies of Allah, against those who are doing saddun an sabilillah, they don't want people to move in the path of Allah, in the path of freedom, in the path of knowing the truths, He fought them directly, head on, did not hold back. This is what the main quality in Malcolm X, what he said here, what he said there, having debates about how accurate is this, how accurate is it, that needs to be looked into and understood. That's not an issue. The, the problem is, when the same enemy tries to use these as distractions so you don't see that main element in the character of, of Malcolm X. 
Can we say salawat, please? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa'alaikum. Allah bless his soul and bless all those who have tried to uh, keep his name alive. It is a worship, it is an ibadah of Allah for people to bring back to life for those who have not remembered him in communities that he has not been remembered in society bringing back that name and mentioning discussing with these elements that make up the greatness of Malcolm X whoever is involved in that is doing a great worship a great service to Allah and we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts what was said and what was heard tonight uh, in regards to this shaheed and what he did as a worship inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the return of our imam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us become his true and close companions we ask Allah to help all those who are helping his cause, especially our ulama, our maraja, and more so our leader. We ask Allah to forgive us all of our sins, forgive our parents, our grandparents, our relatives, all believers, those who are alive, those who have passed away. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant all of us our hajat, our needs, cure all the ill from amongst us. We ask Allah to relieve all the people of the world of the oppressions they're facing. Bin Nabi wa alih rahimallah man qara al fatihata ma as salawat. Allah. 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 Allah.